So it's, they're not going to let people go out and start new banks so they fix the problems that are out there right now. So we're going to see the consolidation of the banking sector. And then lastly, our national trade, in December, our imports fell at the fastest rate ever recorded in world history. So uh, we don't have it, but it was, uh, and then you know, we saw a 21% drop in our imports, uh, a lot of imports coming into the country. And the problem is that in terms of automobiles, there's no place to put the cars. In terms of container traffic, well, the retailers have too many goods, so they're not even putting the stuff. In terms of oil, there's no place to put the oil. All the tanks are full. And so there's a lot of boats sitting out there waiting to come in the port, but there's no place to put the stuff. So the, the economy has slowed in a very abrupt way, and that's beginning to impact the most of the world. Go ahead and click the next chart. And, uh, you know, in terms of why consumers leveraged up, this is a bigger problem. You know, Obama and the Democratic Party are actually uh, we're actually ahead of a lot of people on this issue, and they're right on. I just don't know that they have the solutions. I don't know that they else have the solutions either, but I don't know that they have the solutions. But one of the reasons why consumers took on so much debt was that this breakup of consumer spending, a big blue piece of the pie, is mm -hmm. spending on necessities, and just basic necessities. Food, housing, health care, and energy now take 57 cents out of every dollar. And, you know, I'm not including other necessities like clothing, because I know there's a place here in Tascare where they don't wear it anymore. <laughs> 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 don't know where that place is. It's about two miles Cents out of every dollar of consumer spend. It's up from 49 cents 10 years ago and about 46 cents 20 years ago. And some of it's been housing, some of it's been energy. A big part of it's health care. It's taken up a larger proportion of the dollars that people are spending. And even with reversal in energy prices, the reversal in, uh, in, in housing prices, uh, we're still very close to 57 cents. So that means that that's stuff that we have to buy. And you know, you don't have to buy the nicest house on the block, but stuff that you have to buy. And the other stuff, stuff you want to buy, like black panel TVs, new cars, clothes, um, restaurant meals, hotels, Super Bowl tickets, things like that. Well, you want to get more of that and, and spend as little as you can on this. Well, one way you can do that is you can cut back on the necessities of the money. You can shop at Walmart or Costco, people do. You can buy a smaller house, people do that. Um, but, you know, all of those things cause for real changes in behavior. You can also get another job, work harder. People did that. They sent their wife to work, they sent their husband to work, um, and people have all done all those things. All of those things cause call for changes in behavior. You can save your money and invest it, and ultimately earn money off your investments, and then you got another income. Again, that causes for changes in behavior. Or you can take the easy route. You can borrow against your home. Uh, you, can, uh, you can borrow in general, take on more debt, and you can tell yourself that, hey, it's going to be okay because the value of my house is going to go up. The value of my stock is going to go up. The value of my 401k is going to go up. And I can carry some debt because eventually I'll be able to pay it back because the value of my assets will go up. And that's what we did. We leveraged up. We bought into that bargain, and that's how we leveraged up as a society. And that's, but that was the driver. Now that's part of the, that's part of the reason. So we had a need to borrow more money. The flip side of it is we also had the ability to borrow more money because the financial sector geared up to be helping it. So we had, you know, the perfect intersection. People needed to borrow. And we had all these old folks in Europe. I mean, they're a lot older than us. Uh, and so they're, uh, you know, so Europe is a good 20 years older than the United States is. So they, they all, they're all in a time where they need to earn some higher returns in this, in this low rate environment. And so they were right, right in about those CEOs. And, um, and so we had this perfect intersection of supply and demand and what it allowed people to really leverage up. 
and now people realize it didn't work, and and because of that, we're having to, to be left. Go ahead and click to the next one. Well, uh, this is what's going on in the credit markets, and, and just suffice it to say that this middle chart right here, that first spike you see up there is August 9th, and what this chart shows you is the TED spread. The TED spread is a measure of confidence in the banking system. When it increases, there's less confidence in the banking system. The way that it's put together is it is the difference between the rate of three month euro dollars and the three month treasury bill. Now, I know that sounds kind of confusing, but the, the interest rate on three month euro dollars represents the rate that banks in Europe charge each other to lend dollars <coughs> overnight. The key is dollars, not lending euros, but not lending yen. And because uh, they're worried that you know that maybe this French bank had some rogue trader that went long stocks in Hong Kong and they should have gone short, or you know they weren't supposed to be trading to begin with. You know that happened you know, last year. But anyway, they may be more reluctant, or they bought a bunch of subprime things they didn't know what they were. Maybe if banks become less willing to lend another bank, and the euro dollar rate goes up. But because they have those dollars, next to the dollars that they were going to lend, they got to do something. With so they buy T-bills and that pushes the T-bill rate down. And the, the spread between those is a tense spread. And so it spiked when that BNP Paribas made that happen because people are like, well, holy smoke, I don't want to lose BNP money. And then it rose again in, in Thanksgiving, and it rose with Bear Stearns, and then in September is when it blew off. And that spread influenced the spreads on all types of borrowing. So that way it became tougher for banks in Europe to loan out bar dollars. It became tough for homebuyers to borrow dollars, commercial businesses to buy dollars, and in the commercial real estate market, it practically killed the commercial real estate market. And uh, because it became very tough for people to buy dollars. But most importantly, it killed the secondary market, secondary loan market, which is when banks make loans, they package them up, use securities, and sell them in the secondary market. And that market has largely been dead. And that's where most of the commercial real estate lending was taking place. That's this market right here. The market died here. And the spread went from here to here. It, you know, and then just to make sure it was dead, it shot it again. <laughs> and then it shot it again. And, um, and it's so dead right now that uh, the people that are experts in that industry believe it will never, ever recover. And I was on a panel last week, not commercial real estate, but the CMS yes one. I was on a panel last week with two experts, one that had just lost his job at Bank of America. Um, that's what happens to real experts. <laughs> but he's a really smart guy, and the guy from the Federal Reserve. And I said, I do think the market will come back. And I said, first, it will come back in a different way. And I said, you know, I hope it doesn't come back. I'm trying to remember the, the Stephen King model. The baby, you know, the baby kept coming back nearer and nearer and nearer. But it's, uh, but in any event, the, uh, it will come back, and I think that before the CBS market comes back, we're going to get a something called a covered bond market. And that market will have to develop first. And the, the upshot of this is that commercial real estate development is probably not going to start, get, it's probably not going to be strong again until 2014. It doesn't mean that there won't be any commercial real estate activity, but we will not see any boom commercial real estate activity until 2014. There is nothing at all unusual about the timeline between when the market reply and when the market again. It's about, that's about average. Uh, what is a little unusual in this instance, though, is that the contrast to residential development, we didn't really ever build office buildings, industrial space, and retail space all that month. And so um, a lot of Europeans are now very interested in buying U.S. commercial real estate. Go ahead and flip to the next one. Uh,